Welcome to the first episode of Books from Goodwill, a series that I decided to start in order to give myself a little motivation to read the massive amounts of books I've been purchasing from Goodwill as of late, while searching for good deals on old video games. And while this month's selection was something of an oddball choice in my opinion, I felt it would be a good idea to pick up a book that I could finish reading in a short period of time. And Magic Pony Carousel number 1, Sparkle, the Circus Pony, definitely meets that criteria, seeing as how it clocks in at a meager 89 pages, contains rather large sized text for a book, and features at least half a dozen pages dedicated to illustrations. Poppy Shire is a rather difficult author to research. There just doesn't appear to be that much information out there about her. In fact, the only things I can say for sure about her is that she lives in the English countryside and has published six books about young girls being whisked away by a magic pony carousel to go on adventures. But the only other piece of information I can offer up with any certainty behind it is that she is probably British. I suppose one of the worst things you could ever do to a book, or any work for that matter, would be to judge it by its cover. But the cover is the first thing you're going to see, and it's usually the aspect of the book that will catch your initial interest. And while the cover for this book isn't exactly ugly, it's also rather plain and boring. In fact, the only real draw for this book is the word magic in the title. I imagine I don't need to point this out, but this book was aimed at a much younger and probably female audience. As such, I don't feel comfortable offering any sort of definitive verdict on this book. Since as an adult and a man to boot, it would be rather difficult for me to judge how much a young girl would enjoy this book. The story of this book is about a young girl named Megan taking a ride on Barker's magic pony carousel and being whisked away to an actual circus where she'll need to save its grand finale. In many ways, this book is rather lacking in terms of rising action, and as such lacks a climax with any real payoff. While the book does establish that Megan was sent to the circus with the intent of completing a task, the audience isn't told that anything bad will happen to her if she fails to complete that task. As such, it's hard to really get all that emotionally invested when she appears to be incapable of completing said task. Without a clear threat, these failures seem like only a minor setback at best, or a minor inconvenience at worst. Another issue that plagues the book, in my opinion, is that the book never really gets into the specifics of how magic works, or what its limitations are. Which is something I find rather problematic, considering how often the author seems to sweep potential issues under the rug with the simple phrase, It's all part of the magic. The only real strength I can offer this book is that it does showcase that there is more than one way to approach a problem. Or as the classic saying goes, there is more than one way to skin a cat. While I won't attempt to offer any sort of definitive verdict on whether people should read Magic Pony Carousel No. 1, Sparkle, The Circus Pony, I will say that I personally feel that this book is rather lacking in a lot of areas, and in need of further refinement. Though I can't rule out that I largely feel that way because of my age and my usual taste in literature, featuring a protagonist that has to put their life on the line in order to save the world. Before I show the selection for next month's episode, I'd like to apologize for the lack of interesting visuals in this episode. I was sort of rushing for time because I wanted to get this done on the second Saturday of the month, and I just want to keep that as the consistent schedule for book discussions from now on, because it's just much easier that way. And I prefer to write them in a review format, because it's somewhat, hopefully, easier for me to break down my thoughts and feelings about the book that way. That way I'm not just going off on tangents and rambles. But yes, next week we'll be taking a look at Dragon's Keep, a book that will probably be a lot longer in Meteor, considering it's at least 296 pages long. And it doesn't look like there's any illustrations in this book, based on my quick flipping through it. And the text is a lot smaller than the last book. Though that'd probably be hard to tell since I haven't shown it, but yeah. Till next time, then. See ya.